Hello and welcome to Social Studies again and today we're going to be looking at the different types of governments that have influenced the world throughout time. Today in the United States we have a democracy, we have a federal government where power is shared between the states and the national government and we assume that that is normal. But if you look at the entirety of time, this is kind of the exception. It's only a few times that a republic was ever tried with democratic principles. So we're gonna take a look at all the different types of government throughout history and how they influenced us today. All right, to understand, government did not always exist. And there was a world that existed before human government. And it, it's basically the law of nature. Might makes right. And whoever was the strongest and the smartest survived. Um, we call this situation anarchy. And that's a situation where there is no government. This can happen after a civil war in modern countries today when a government has been deposed of and a new government has not been established yet. That's why you often see rioting and looting happening when a government falls. For example, when Saddam Hussein was uh, thrown out of power in Iraq, a lot of the museums were looted in Iraq. Now, communism is the complete opposite of anarchy. Communism is where everything is controlled. Communism, uh, at its root, believes that there is no private property. No one can own anything. So therefore, everything belongs to the government. So it's not just government buildings belonging to the government, but also your house belongs to the government. The car you drive belongs to the government. The decision of where you work belongs to the government. The press belongs to the government, and your speech belongs to the government, and your education belongs to the government, and your health care is determined by the government as well. There is no alternative. You see this in a country like China today, or Cuba, or North Korea. Now, we are a democracy. A democracy is a government where the people have elections, free elections. That's a key because even North Korea and China have elections, but you don't get to choose who you vote for. You vote for who they tell you to. In the United States and a lot of Western countries, we get to choose who we vote for and we are not arrested if we vote for the other party. Um, there are actually two kinds of democracies. One kind of democracy is the kind we practice mostly here in the United States. It's called a representative democracy or an indirect democracy. A representative democracy is exactly what it sounds like. We choose representatives to represent us in an elected body of either parliament or congress. In the United States, it's called Congress. In the United Kingdom, it's called Parliament. And these representatives sit down and make the laws for our countries. Now, there is another kind of democracy called a direct democracy. And the United States is not a direct democracy. Ancient Greece, the Athenians, are an example of a direct democracy where every citizen gets together and they literally vote on every law. Think about it. You do not vote on every law that is created in the United States. You vote for a representative and then there is a process that the law is created through. And if we don't like the way they vote, we vote for the other guy the next time, the next election, right? But we don't worry about every single law. That's not our job. We choose a representative to do that. In ancient Greece, that was not the case. In ancient Greece, they literally got together once a month at the polis and they voted on every single thing, not just every person. So that's a direct democracy. We do have direct democracies in the United States today. They are called town meetings. In small towns in New England, they may meet 
And all the citizens that show up on that certain day, they literally vote on every law in the community. There is actually a direct democracy uh, very close to us. It's in Farrell Valley. Uh, Farrell Valley is an enclave inside of Mineral Wells. And there, the people who live there will meet together once a year and they decide things like who's going to take care of the pond and the gravel road and how much it's going to cost everybody. That is actually an example of direct democracy. Now, our founding fathers established this federal democratic republic idea out of a world that was dominated by monarchy. A monarchy is somebody ruled by a king or a queen. And back in the 1700s, you had traditional monarchies where the monarch had absolute power. But today, most of your monarchies in the West are constitutional monarchies where a parliament keeps control over the monarch and has most of the power. Meanwhile, the monarch is still the representative for their nation. An example of this is the United Kingdom or England. Now, monarchy developed out of a world that, that, that developed after the fall of the Roman Empire. And this world that developed developed a system called feudalism. Feudalism was a European political system in which a lord owned a plot of land called a fief. And if they had a fief, they had control of that area. And there were people who did not have land. And this land was granted to them. Um, the use of that land was granted to them as long as they would take care of the land and raise crops and give a large portion of those crops to the land lord. That's where we get the word landlord from. The fief would then be taken care of by the peasants. The noble would swear to take care of the peasants' lives and protect them from, you know, barbarians who might come through and, like, try to wipe out peasant villages. Of course, to do this, there were knights needed, and the knights would go and they had they had several jobs one of them was to protect from outsiders and we get that military concept of a knight today the other the head knight on every fief was called the sharif we get the word sheriff from that and their job was to police the area and collect taxes now these taxes were collected because all the lords would then be under one grand lord. So all the fiefs of all these lords would be under the domain of one highest lord. And this highest lord was called a king. So it was the king's domain or the king's dom or the kingdom. That's where we get kingdom from. That word comes from king's domain. And the king, had say over all the Lord's knights within his domain. Now, this was a very tedious system. It was held together by a system of oaths. An oath is not just a promise. A promise is two people making a promise to each other. But an oath is bigger than that. You swear to something bigger than yourself. And what was bigger than yourself during the Middle Ages? Well, it was the Roman Catholic Church. And so the church's job was to oversee and make sure all these oaths were honored. And so the head of the Roman Catholic Church was the Pope. And for a long time, the Pope was the most powerful man in Europe for over a thousand years. Uh, by the time we get to the 1700s, his power is starting to wane because feudalism is dying out. And the kings have the most power. Now, the United States is a democracy, we know that, but it's also a federalist government. Federalism is when power is shared between a national and state government, and the supreme law of the land is the national government's constitution. Look at our country. 
The supreme law of the land is the U.S. Constitution. States cannot pass laws that go against the U.S. Constitution. Now, the opposite of that in that realm is a confederation. And actually, the United States' first government was not a federalist government, but rather a confederist government. And this is when there's shared power between the national and state governments, but the supreme power belongs to each state. So states can pass laws that go against the national government, and the national government has to comply. This was the kind of government also established by the southern states between 1861 and 1865 when they rebelled against the United States. They claimed the right to break away on states' rights, or the states' right to break away and, and not follow the U.S. Constitution. This was one of the major pushing points of the Civil War. Does a state have the right to break away from national law? The Civil War and its decision was no. Now, Something to remember, when our founding fathers established our government, the United States didn't exist yet. When they founded this country, they were part of England. What they did was treason. And they started a revolution against England and established a new government. This is called a revolutionary government. And the revolutionary government of the United States was the Second Continental Congress. They met at Independence Hall in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. After the American Revolution, we had a system of government that honestly was meant to just be kind of a hold until we established the kind of government we actually wanted. And that government was called the Articles of Confederation. It was actually the first constitution of the United States. Our current constitution came around 1789. Between 1776 and 1789, we're ruled by the Articles of Confederation. That was our transitional government. Now, one of the things in our U.S. Constitution is the First Amendment, and one of the rights of the First Amendment is freedom of religion. That was a radical statement <coughs> put in our Constitution in the 1790s. The world before did not have freedom of religion. Every government had an official religion of the state. And a lot of ancient civilizations, the state and the government, I mean the government and the religion were not even separated at all. They were the same thing. An example is ancient Egypt where Pharaoh claimed to possess Ma'at. And Ma'at was basically since he was a descendant of the gods, in theory, whatever he said must be true. He could see things that nobody else could see. I mean, he's Pharaoh. He's a descendant of the gods. He could, so we all know the sky is blue. If Pharaoh said, today the sky is orange, even though you can look up and see the sky is blue, you would say, well, I must be wrong because the Pharaoh can see better than me, and he clearly sees the sky is orange. Today, theocracies are rare, okay? But there is a theocracy in Iran right now. Iran is a quote-unquote democratic theocracy. They do have elections for their leaders, but all leaders have to do what the Ayatollah or the religious leader of the Shiite Islamic Church, or mosque, says. A theocracy is a government where the leader claims to be a god, to be a descendant of a god, or one with the gods, or the leader sent by the gods. That is a theocracy. All right, thank you for paying attention. 
And I hope this was good information for you. There will be a quiz on it. And good luck. Thank you very much.